Hello there fellows, welcome to our new video on Isaac Lab Legged Robots Reinforcement Learning. This is going to be a video series that we are going to discuss about the Legged Robots Reinforcement Learning by using PPO based library called RSLRL. In those video series, we are going to talk about how to control robots with reinforcement learning and we are also going to make a good introduction to the Isaac Lab and Isaac Sim environments. And especially in those video series, we're going to focus on the legged robots and we're going to do some applications with Unitary G1 and also Unitary Go to robots. So, we're going to talk about what is a physics simulator and Isaac Sim. We're going to talk about that, then we're going to introduce Isaac Lab and RSLRL library. So, a physics simulator is copying the real world that we can try our robots inside of it easily. Especially in the reinforcement learning, we need, we need multiple trials, for example, thousands of trials to optimize a policy. But if we try that in real life, we're going to have a problem that our robot is going to have some damage and some problems and also resetting the environment is taking a lot of time. But if we do that in a computer program, it's really easy to reset the environment and we can do our trials without hurting our robots mechanically. So there are some examples of those physics simulators. For example, we are going to talk about Isaac Sim. Previously, we made some applications and I showed you some trials on Gazebo. And also, we didn't talk about, but there is Mujoko and Isaac Jim. We are going to especially talk about Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab built on it in those physics simulators manner. So, what is Isaac Sim? Isaac Sim is developed by NVIDIA which allows researchers to do really realistic simulations. Uh, what are the differences between Isaac Sim and other simulators? So Isaac Sim is providing a better image quality, video quality, and it has some rendering properties. Also, as I've seen, uh, its uh, physical um, representation is better than the other simulations and it's also supported by NVIDIA and many companies are also building their robots and they're putting the simulation predefined assets to the Isaac Sim like for example Unitree or Boston Dynamics or other kind of companies so you can try many different robots without designing it from initial or without designing it from scratch so this is the advantage of the Isaac Sim. So what are the requirements for Isaac Sim 4.5? Um, in here, the most important point is your GPU since it has some rendering properties. So if you have more than RTX 3070, that's going to be work. And in that case, actually, you have to have an RTX GPU, NVIDIA RTX GPU, because this is only supporting that. As I heard, as I seen, it's not supporting H100s or other kind of NVIDIA GPUs. And also it's not supporting the other GPU companies, GPUs. Also you need some virtual RAM and also good capability for computation and CPU. And for our tutorials, we're going to work on Ubuntu 22.04. From this link, you can install it and you can try it. So what are the environments in the Isaac Sim 4.5? So as I told you, many companies have already added their assets to Isaac Sim 4.5. For example, for Unity, you can use Go2, Go1, A1, H1, and G1. Those are legged robots. You can also use a spot in the, in the Boston Dynamics. 
and additionally you can also use different companies robotics robotic arms we we are not going to talk about the robotic arms and dexterous tasks but uh yeah you can also use that in isaac sim and you can also check the other assets in this uh, link i'm gonna add this to the video's description so let's continue with the isaac lab Isaac Lab is open source framework for robust learning, which is also built by NVIDIA, and it's built on Isaac Sim. It uh, simplifies the workflows and robotic research, and you can easily apply the reinforcement learning, imitation learning, and other kind of control algorithms. And it's also coming with uh, advanced simulation capabilities, like it's adding uh, physics. Physics. Uh, this is kind of supporting the physics simulator, and it's uh, helping the Isaac Sim for developing robotics applications. So, in that case, um, let's look at the reinforcement learning part, especially in the Isaac Sim. When we look at it, we are going to use the RSL RL, uh, which is a PPO-based algorithm. In their official paper, they are also saying that they're uh, supporting TRPO, but uh, it's kind of depreciated, to be honest. And also, it's allowing us to, for example, use PyTorch uh, on it. It's a PyTorch-based library. And they also mentioned some things. I got this from the NVIDIA's website. Uh, they have a small community, but uh, also you can uh, find a lot of examples in Isaac Lab. And then... Let's continue with uh, RSL RL. So it's uh, developed by the RSL uh, laboratory in ETH3, and uh, they designed this for especially reinforcement learning uh, for the legged robots. And it's supporting uh, the actual PPO architecture, PPO uh, algorithms. And by using that, you can um, easily define some parameters and train your own robot or train any other robot which has legs. And in there we also talk about the PPO. The PPO is a very famous um, reinforcement learning architecture. And even ChatGPT is using PPO for their reinforcement learning tasks for their large language models. So we may have another video detailed describing the PPO, but I'm gonna tell some small details about it. It's a kind of actor critic uh, model. So what is it doing? The actor one is actually the policy network. It uh, outputs the probability distribution uh, of the uh, actions for a given state. So from those uh, probability distributions, you're selecting the uh, one of the actions from there. And then you're moving it to the ratio. Uh, the ratio is comparing the previous policy with the new policy. And according to that, you're uh, coming to here and you're having another uh, important part which is advantage estimation so uh, in here the formula is like that the advantage estimation is an algorithm uh, which actually uh, measures how much better an action is compared to the average action at a state so um, this reduces the variance in policy gradient estimates and after that, you're comparing this two uh, by using the clip algorithm. Clip algorithm is uh, allowing you to avoid from huge differences. For example, um, probably previous I showed you how to uh, use um, reinforcement learning applications, the deep reinforcement learning with the turtle bot. But in there, for example, um, the chains are so uh, huge between actions, for example. But especially if you have a robot, a legged robot, you have many parameters. So if you change the, those parameters so fast, uh, it's gonna fail. So you want to change it uh, step by step. So this uh, clip algorithm is allowing you 
to change it step by step uh, without moving too further. And in here, uh, you can also use KL Divergence. Uh, you can check the uh, library, uh, the RSLRL library for it. For this architectural photo, uh, I get it from another paper since uh, they didn't mention uh, about those architecture diagram in the RSLRL and official PPO uh, paper. So this is working like that. After that, you're uh, updating the weights according to it. And there is also the critic model, which is also uh, moving to the advantage function. This critic model uh, is actually criticize your um, policy. And actually, it's um, how can I say? Actually, as I written here, it's uh, assessing the quality of the chosen actions. And according to that, it's allowing you to criticize your policy and updating the policy better. So it's working like that. And after that, you're getting an action from the actor model. And this is moving to the environment. And after that, uh, you're coming to the, uh, you're getting the state from it. And you're putting the state to the actor and critic model again. So it's working like that. And also, since you're using RSLRL, you don't have to uh, get deeper in the PPO architecture. Why? Because uh, they are already been um, providing you some parameters that you can uh, change the hyperparameters. And according to that, you can get different results. For example, you can get the how many inputs are gonna, for example, how. Uh, in, for example, uh, go to training. Uh, it's 48, for example, you're getting 48 different um, observations. Those observations are coming from uh, your position, your uh, LiDAR data and other kind of things. Also, on the bottom of this legs, uh, on the feet, there is a sensor which is measuring whether uh, it's touched to the ground or not. So there are also touch sensor. And at the end, you have 12 different actions for the go to robot. Why? Because uh, there are one, two, three. Um, you can calculate it from the motors. This is one motor, this is second motor, and this is the third motor. Those are the motors per leg. And every leg has three motors, so that means you have 12 different actions, 12 different parameters for the motors. So your uh, network is getting those observations and converting it to the actions. And after that, for the PPO, you don't need a really deep neural network. For example, these are really lower than even for the, you know, CNN based uh, applications. And this is also good for you because you can use it with small computers on it. Like, for example, with Jets Norin, you can easily run this um, neural network in real time. And sometimes you need more than real time since uh, you're moving a robot, which is a real agile robot. If you don't uh, get action on time, it's going to fall down or something. And for the activation of functions, it's using ELU. And... Yeah, for the critic network, you also need uh, this network for criticizing the actor. So it is working like that. This is only an example. We are going to ex uh, examine the network more detailly when we move to the Isaac lab. For the Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab, there is one disadvantage. Uh, they have many files, and I also prepare this diagram, which is showing which call is doing uh, which actions in the program. So, for example, there's play pi contains, for example, testing. There's train pi, which which is getting the, for example, training parameters from the user and starts the train for the given epochs. There are rewards.py, for example, which contains the rewards. Uh, there is Markov decision process, mdp.py, and there are also other kind of things. For example, there are some configuration files, which configurates the environment, 
like for example adding some rock surfaces sometimes uh, adding some stairs or whether it's going to be flat what are the friction parameters those are being in here there is velocity.py uh, in here velocity environment.py uh, which is also preparing the environment uh, and uh, for example you're defining the uh, resetting states how to get the observations uh, what are the success criteria and other kind of things and yeah those are actually uh, having different kind of purposes in the next videos we are also going to explain it and thank you for watching our video in the next videos we are going to get deeper into how to program the Isaac Lab or Isaac Sim environments and how to change parameters and how to, for example, train our own policy in here. And for more details, you can contact us in Lens Lab in Arizona State University. And thank you for watching. Have a nice day.